It was a cold night, cooler than usual for the city. The moon shone above us, lighting our path. We didn't need to see our destination. The place may have all well been programmed into our minds. The only place open at the far end of town, overlooking a placid ocean that stretched for who knows how long. It drew us like a flame. The building, decrepit and decaying as it was, let loose a soft light from its one window. A single word, its paint chipped away, stretch over the plate glass. At one point it said Jerry's, and now it just looks too disfigured to tell what it is. The place is old. Drugs were one of the many things that it offered, but only to a close crowd of hand-picked customers. Everyone else knew it as a coffee house that stayed open despite of its lack of business. Many suspected that it was a front art for something more sinister, or that it was simply being funded from the owner's pocket alone. If only they knew. They'd wish that the explanation was that simple. Still, the thoughts of the general populace aren't why you're reading this, are you? You're reading this because you're insane. <laughs> Sorry, that just kind of slipped out. What I meant was you're reading because you're seeking, like many others. I have to warn you. You're traveling a well-worn, but nonetheless dangerous path. If you want to continue, fine. Just don't blame me. You're going to need a full bottle of alcohol, preferably whiskey, though the brand doesn't matter. A knife, a mix of destroying Angel, Halibor, and Belladonna. All of these things must be got at the same place. This is the place you'll be performing the ritual, so be sure it's lonely or you risk being caught. I know what you're thinking. How the hell am I supposed to get a bottle of whiskey, a knife, and some rare herbs all in the same place? All I can say is, there's ways. Manipulate a friend into buying these things for you and bringing them to the ordained spot. Find the herb knife alcohol store, I don't know. I just know it has to be done. When you've done this, wait for a night. When the stairs sparkle like the shards of a shattered mirror, if it's the right time, you should smell incense faintly in the wind. As soon as you arrive, the skies will darken to a royal purple. And the grasses, even if not present before, will blacken. The slightest touch will make them crumble, so it's easy to know where you've been before. Look to the horizon, and you'll see two white pillars jutting up into the sky. Walk towards them. You'll want to make the most direct path possible. Trust me on this. It's my only gift to you. Approaching them, you'll find a woman chained to the bottom of a deep well, deeper than you could possibly hold your breath. She doesn't struggle, she doesn't scream, she simply stares up at you with a persistent want. Don't meet her gaze, or you'll find yourself walking towards the well, whether you want to or not. You'll jump in and eventually drown trying to save her. Keep walking towards the pillars and find a series of raised platforms, forming a staircase to the highest one. As you walk up them, you'll hear and see the most terrible things. People being slowly flayed to the bone, infants being raped, people screaming for help, for mercy. Ignore them. They are but memories now. You cannot save them. As you step onto the platform, it will collapse out beneath you. Still got the alcohol from before? You're going to need it if luck's not in your favor. As you plummet to your death, you will hear one of two things. A powerful voice stating that it is not yet your time to die or the same voice reciting a long list of everything you've ever done that would condemn you. If you hear the former, congratulations, you're clear. Skip the following message and carry on. If you hear the latter, well then, you better hope Death's thirsty. If he is, you can trade your bottle of alcohol for one more year. It will be easily the most uneventful year you'll ever have, because your unplanned extension cannot be allowed to have effects on the lives of others, lest it attract the notice of the Ark Gods, who are very destroyed and start again happy. Still, this kind of thing happens when you make people serve thousand year long shifts. Just saying. If all goes properly, you'll find yourself in the vast expense of void. Stay perfectly still and watch for the ground. The ground should spawn flashing squares. These are markers for the more forgeful deities, so that they can avoid death by matter of compression. 
That's right. You're in the heart of a black hole. Technically, you're smaller than the lowliest bit of the subatomic particle. But that's got no bearing on things. Remember the coffee house from before? That's your end goal. As you walk through the wormhole, keep it in your mind. Feel the cool sea breeze on your face. Smell the crisp, salty air. Hear the plucking of a nostalgic melody drift idly through the night. Go towards the light and open the door. If you did it correct, you'll see an empty coffee house. Tables are scattered throughout the room, all in states of disuse. Some chairs are tipped over, the food on the table is waiting patiently for an owner who will never return. Choose one of them and sit down. Eventually the piano man will notice you and come over. He will ask you about why you're here so late at night. The smell of stale coffee and cigarette smoke will lace his every breath. But make no notice nor mention of this. Else you will be found the next morning, reeking of boar burned and coffee. Your vocal cords will be messily removed from your throat, usually severing the jugular, and it would be discovered in your rectum. If you give him a decent answer, he'll suddenly lean close and inhale deeply. Don't ask him what he's doing. Just hold up your packet of herbs. He'll snatch it away, a greedy gleam in his eyes, and point his chubby thumb towards the back. Walk back there and you'll find the door to the cellar, conveniently hidden behind the register counter. Pull it and open to find a beautiful woman shackled to the tiny room's walls. As soon as you go down, the door will slam shut behind you. You'll hear the sound of a lock clicking into place. The person before you is a god or goddess that has fallen from grace. If you wish to become a deity, you must find a way to kill them and steal their soul. Do this with much quickness, chained or not, you're facing a deity. If you aren't destroyed in the first couple of seconds, you'll eventually starve to death. But you'd give anything to be powerful, wouldn't you?